Hello and welcome to Global Health TV and the launch of our new monthly show exploring complex issues in worldwide health improvement, reducing disparities and protecting against global threats. As we're all too well aware, COVID-19, a previously unknown virus, has ravaged the world and its health system. Today, health services in all regions are struggling to both tackle COVID-19 and provide people with health care. In a further blow, the pandemic threatens to set back hard-won global health progress achieved over the past two decades, such as fighting infectious diseases and improving maternal and child health. Scientists around the world are working fast to develop and produce vaccines that can stop the spread of COVID-19. Since the emergence of this novel coronavirus in December 2019, more than a dozen vaccines are being rolled out. But the distribution of vaccines has been unequal and has led to India and South Africa to put a proposal to the World Trade Organization for a suspension of intellectual property or IP rights on COVID vaccines last October. The move was opposed by the US and other high income countries such as the UK, Switzerland, Germany and Japan. The requested waiver would exempt WTO member countries from enforcing certain laws related to patents and industry trade secrets that are covered under the organization's trade related aspects of intellectual property rights or TRIPS agreement. If approved unanimously, the waiver would give countries and companies access to vaccine ingredients and manufacturing processes, allowing drug companies worldwide to make generic versions of COVID-19 vaccines for distribution in developing countries that currently do not have access. In May 2021, the US administration under President Biden signaled a sharp U-turn and agreed to support the proposal. Since then, major pharmaceutical companies are forcefully lobbying the WTO against the TRIPS waiver, and the proposed waiver received a lacklustre response from leaders at June's G7 meeting in the UK. So where does that leave the uh, TRIPS waiver now? I'm joined now by Jayati Ghosh. Now, Jayati, we know that you support uh, the TRIPS waiver, don't you? The TRIPS waiver is only a first step. It's not going to ensure vaccination for all, but it is a necessary first legal step to get over some legal hurdles that will prevent greater supply across the world. Because right now, every country, even if it tries to do compulsory licensing, will have to take licenses by producer, by company, for all of the different elements that go into making the vaccines. So for the mRNA vaccines, there are 64 different patents involved. Right. So to ease that process and also to enable countries to go in for compulsory licensing without facing legal cases in the WTO, this is basically just saying, give us the waiver during the period of the pandemic so we can go ahead with trying to make other producers get the vaccines out. You've talked before about a, a people's vaccine. What do you mean by that? I mean a vaccine that is available universally to everyone in the world without cost to that person. And that's essential because this is a public health pandemic. It is something that, in fact, it's in all of our interests to make sure that everybody else is vaccinated because otherwise it will persist. As we see, we're getting newer variants by the day. And we don't know which of these variants is now then going to mutate into becoming impervious to a vaccine. So the sooner we get everybody vaccinated, the more we will be able to solve this pandemic and actually move on. The longer we take, the chances are that this will persist and it will come back in different forms. And not only will we have deep inequality in terms of the kinds of responses that people and governments make, but we will actually have a continued pandemic for God knows how many years. Did you see enough of a sense of urgency at the G7 meeting to, to sort this out? The G7 meeting was a huge disappointment, quite frankly. I think somehow G7 leaders are just showing again and again that they see themselves as leaders of G7, not of the world, that they are really concerned about their own national interests. I mean, half of the meeting was spent discussing the threat from China, when surely the threat from the pandemic is much greater. So I really I was deeply disappointed, and I felt that it shows a major lack of leadership at a time when the world needs leadership very, very urgently. 
And what do you think now needs to be done? I think several things need to be done. Number one, immediately the G7 leaders should agree to the TRIPS waiver in the WTO. Number two, they should push their own vaccine makers, the ones who are holding patents and have produced these vaccines with massive public support, with prior public research, with huge public subsidies. They should push them to share the technology with other producers in the developing world in other countries. And there are more than 200 producers ready and waiting and willing to take on this challenge. And they should be pushing them to share this technology. They should also be sharing much more than the paltry 1 billion that they have shared. The G7 countries together grabbed 85% of the world's 2021 supply of vaccines. They don't need that. They have taken many times in excess of their population. They should be sharing that immediately. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. We really appreciate your insight. So thank you. Thank you. Now, Anne Moore is a senior lecturer in biochemistry and cell biology at the University College Cork. She believes a waiver won't fix the global shortage of COVID vaccines. Now, Anne, why don't you believe a waiver would work? What are the biggest barriers, in your view as a scientist, working on vaccine development to increasing COVID vaccine production and deployment? I guess if you're talking about a TRIPS waiver to working in the sense of helping to accelerate the availability and deployment of COVID-19 vaccines, um, it won't work in, because it won't make a difference. Um, and if anything, it'll inhibit the generation of new vaccines. Um, and at the moment, there is no evidence that there is a constraint due to patents for um, the accelerated manufacture of COVID-19 vaccines and for their deployment. So the big issues at the moment for um, getting 11 billion doses at least of COVID-19 vaccines uh, deployed is our ability to manufacture them extremely quickly. You need capacity, you need facilities, you need actual physical space to make these vaccines. Uh, you also need the capacity of expertise and uh, experienced uh, individuals, both on the kind of manufacturing floor, but also in the company overall, to um, know how to make these vaccines and know how to not just make them, but also assess the quality of those vaccines and be able to make them, vial them, test their quality and release them for use uh, for the population overall. So if we there's a global shortage of, of, uh, of that capacity, uh, both in high income countries as well as in low middle income countries. What's needed for technology transfer to work in the development of vaccines? Wherever it's going to, you have to have the expertise. Wherever it's coming from, you have to have expertise and people available to take this, you know, to work on this project of transferring it to another com uh, com a company or another site. And then finally, if that site is in a different country, that country has to have a, a national regulator um, who has the ability to go in and audit that facility to make sure it's of the right standards, the records are correct, that there is an audit trail to know that that vaccine has been made to the right quality so that the safety is maintained in that. So it's not just about in a new site, maybe in a new country. It, within that um, legis legislative region, the regulator has to be there as well. And that can be an issue in low and middle income countries. And I, for one, believe that we do need to, to work on that in the future to make sure as many regions as possible can uh, produce a vaccine as quickly as possible on a regional basis. Why do you think intellectual property or IP regulations in relation to COVID vaccines are still needed? So it allows for a very clear definition of who, create, who, who invented things, who created them, and who, uh, if you want to use it, go to that person, go to that entity and agree to be able to use it. So they, they, they can facilitate collaboration, they facilitate, they greatly facilitate the development of vaccines because it is a clear agreement, it's a clear framework to know how it can transfer from, from one company to another. And it has really facilitated traditional um, competitors to be able to work together in making COVID-19 vaccines. But waiving an IP, um, waiving IP rights isn't going to do anything as far as I can see. And I would love for somebody to give me tangible evidence that says this patent has, has um, decreased the speed at which this vaccine has been made because I can't see 
any evidence of it. Um, that being said, we do need to have a higher capacity for more areas, more regions to be able to, to make vaccines. And many thanks indeed for joining us today. That's it for uh, Global Health TV. Thank you for joining us. And join us again next month for more news and views from the global health community. So until then, goodbye.